In this episode of The Mushroom Show, we are interviewing Jasper from Fungi Academy. He is the CEO or Chief Education Officer over there. And if you don't know what Fungi Academy is, well, you're gonna learn all about it in this video. We're gonna talk about all the things that they're doing in terms of mushroom education and in terms of teaching people all about mushrooms, not just sacred mushrooms, which Fungi Academy obviously talks about a lot. We talk about Jasper's personal journey into the mushroom world. We talk about how culture and legality are not always in sync. We talk about how Fungi Academy has really grown and blossomed, but also changed its position as an organization in recent years. We talk about the benefits and drawbacks and some of the unique aspects of Fungi Academy operating out of Lake Atitlan in Guatemala. We also talk about the issues with censorship with mushroom content online and some of the stuff that they've been dealing with with their Instagram accounts and YouTube channels. Fungi Academy is doing some awesome things in the world of mycology, and we're so happy to have Jasper here on The Mushroom Show to talk about it all with you. So I hope you love this episode. Let's jump right into it. So Jasper, thank you so much for coming on the Mushroom Show. I am super stoked to have you here. Thanks for having me, Tony. It's a pleasure. I didn't know it was a thing. And then you invited me. It's amazing. Yeah, and here we are having a conversation. So um, we're going to get into Fungi Academy. We're going to get into everything and all the cool stuff you guys are doing down there in Guatemala. But where I wanted to start is I want to start with your personal journey in mushrooms. So you are the CEO, which means Chief Education Officer at Fungi Academy, which is really cool. And uh, you guys are obviously doing it great there. But how did Jasper find mushrooms? How did you get into mushrooms? Tell me a little bit about your personal story of what led you to where you are today with Fungi Academy. Yeah, um, where to start? I think it, like it's really easy where I actually should start. Like I can start my youth and like the one time I saw Namanita, my parents shut me down uh, when I was really young. But where it actually started is like I was a, on a drinking holiday when I was just turned 18 with some friends. And uh, one of the, the, the friends, instead of drinking, they, they, they brought a bunch of weed and they also were still drinking. But also they brought some truffles, some psilocybin containing truffles. And I... I I don't know. Like when people ask me what used to be your opinion on drugs or anything, I'm like, I didn't know. I never really thought about that, but I was always a curious person. So I, I just had a little bit like a very tight, I think like one fourth of 13 gram, like little thing that you can buy. And it was a very light experience, but I had some, yeah, I, I had some, a lot of fun. I felt myself in like such a center and I was laughing all the time with my friends and, Really funnily, like after that, like that friend group kind of broke apart and I uh, I've found a, a different group, but that was the initial part. And I wanted to explore this more because it made me feel really good in the moment, but also really good afterwards. And after I got really sick and I lost a bunch of weight and I like focused more on my health after that. And I just got kind of really interested in these mushrooms or the truffles that I could buy in the stores. So I kind of became this 18-year-old, like, know it all, like, everybody needs to try this. This will change the world. And we had a lot of really fun, good experiences. And the first time I had, like, a really profound experience was by myself. I quit. I got, I got just told my work. I was sick. My parents were out of town. And I had, like, the whole, uh, the whole 13 gram thing, which I think equivalents, like, three grams of dried mushrooms by myself. And I was, I didn't know what to do, you know, I, I read some things on Arrowhead and some like drug reddits, I think, or mushroom reddits, but I just figured like, watch a, like what a lot of people were saying on the internet is like, you should watch like something colorful. So I watched the Lion King on the come up and I didn't know what I was <laughs> expecting. I just got super yawny and made myself really comfortable. And then like the peak happened, I think started to come up actually during that like scene where with all the uh the wildebeest going down the valley and then i just like felt such a soul connection to simba <laughs> and I, <laughs> I i remember really well like understand like seeing my t myself being in the jungle with timon and pumba and like not living up to my potential and then i cried out of happiness and out of sadness and yeah just for my lost potential and i wanted to live up to that a little bit more and that was such a healing experience because I that made me realize I was super depressed most of my teenage years. And then that experience just like kind of skyrocketed me into a life that is chasing happiness and abundance and connection and all those things. So I was really into these truffles, but they're kind of expensive, especially for an 18 year old. They're like 
13 bucks for a journey. Like I was not making that much money. I was also still going to school. And then my friend told me about one of these like magic mushroom grow kits. So you can buy like a completely, completely free myceliated um, plastic box of it's just grain spawn that they put in a box and then they give you instructions and they, you, they just, you fruit mushrooms straight out of the grain spawn. And like, I just got super into it. Then I started going on a shroomery and mycotopia and did all of that research. But then at the year 2021, I got this really big download that I need to go travel the world. And that's what I did for like years mm -hmm. after. Um, so I like, it's really hard to travel out of a backpack and grow mushrooms. But I was also interested and then I got to Southeast Asia and then like that was the first time I was in a tropical environment and I was just on a hike and I saw out of some elephant dung in Thailand, I saw a very familiar mushroom. I was like, I know what this is. So I smelled it and I bruised it. I was like, this is 100% Celosophy Cavances. And I was just super stoked to be finding them in the wild. So I took a bunch of other backpackers and I did that around Southeast Asia. And while traveling, I was reading mushroom books and all the things just in preparation. Like fast forward like five years, I think I, I had this crazy plan of getting from uh, Seattle and without flying all the way get to Ecuador. So I made it to, um, uh, well, like to Mexico and in Mexico, this weird thing happened where I was couch surfing with this, uh, these two sisters and they had like a tiny pig. And the reason why it's relevant is because this pig, they told me not to leave any food on the on the ground but i forgot about this magic mushroom chocolate that i got from the united states um <laughs> this pig was just munching on my bag and it like broke my bank card it definitely it never got to eat the chocolate luckily the, the bag was too tough but like it broke okay. the chip of my uh, bank cards so i didn't have a bank cards and then in oaxaca mexico i found out about the fungi academy i was like i need to go here this is i already heard about lake atitlan i want to go here and when i got to guatemala I got locked out of my PayPal. So I didn't have my bank card and didn't have PayPal. And I was at Fungi Academy and I was just kind of stuck in one place. And I was like, okay, I got this really big download. It's like, okay, I'm going to be here for a while. And that's kind of my journey with mushrooms. And then like, like just being stuck in Fungi Academy, like with all the books and all the tools to like develop that knowledge that I had from fruiting and that I had the theoretical knowledge of and was able to in like implement that in the, the physical reality. And then I was able to teach and teaching, I think, is the best uh, tutor because, like, then you have to realize, okay, I have this knowledge, but how do I express this knowledge? And if you see, like, it's really a good tool to see gaps in your own knowledge. So that is almost uh, next month. That's three years ago, and it has flown since then. Wow. So that's kind of my journey with mushrooms. It's always amazing to me to think about, you know, the different paths we take in life and how they lead to certain things you know you never realize one day you're watching the lion king having this crazy experience <laughs> and the next thing you know you know that kicks you off into a crazy journey down from seattle through mexico and all the way to guatemala where you still are at today and uh you know if you didn't have that experience um maybe your life would look a lot different today it's just it's always amazing to think about those things and how profound that can actually be you know uh, was that kind of surprising to you at first? I mean, like in the Netherlands, um, and you can speak a lot more about this than I can, but like there is a different narrative around truffles or psilocybin mushrooms than there is in North America. That's changing, obviously, but at the time, like it's a lot more acceptable, like it was legal there and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So is it just kind of more baked into the culture? Or like what is the culture of psilocybin in the Netherlands compared to, say, the United States or Canada? That's actually a, a, a really good question because you assume that the culture is more accepting because legality is more accepting. And actually, in reality, it's the other way around. We have a saying in Dutch. Uh, I'm just going to use the Dutch phrase first and I'll translate it. Do maar normaal, dan doe je al gek genoeg. Which means act normal, that's crazy enough. So psychedelics, that's that's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's not normal, you know. And um, so right. there's like... There's actually uh, there's some really good statistics, mainly on cannabis, and everybody knows, oh, Amsterdam and the Netherlands, cannabis is legal. There is like only 20% mm -hmm. of Dutch, Dutch people that actually have tried cannabis once in their lives. Well, it's in the 80s on the West Coast of the United States, where it, for like until mm -hmm. quite recently, it was illegal. Um, so legality and culture are not always in sync. And I, I remember um, like during my uh, study time and when I was a sales manager there's a and we were partying a lot there's a lot of culture around amphetamines mainly um mdma and just regular amphetamine which we called speed and when i would tell people that i would like trip acid or have mushrooms they're like oh you're crazy 
he'll fuck you up. And I, they were like <laughs> taking MDMA every weekend. So there's just like knowledge and culture and what is acceptable and legal is not always the same, the same thing in, in many ways. So like, I don't know. I, f- I think it's definitely changing. The Netherlands is definitely like in the height culture at least right now with psychedelics and the healing powers of, for example, psilocybin mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, everywhere is coming, coming to that uh, at some point, the narrative is definitely changing, but I find that interesting. Like, yeah, maybe there is an inverse correlation. It's almost like it's boring. You know, I, and I've heard that before with cannabis. It's like, you know, a lot of people where it was legal, like didn't care. It was kind of boring. And whereas somewhere else, like the United States or North America, it was kind of like exotic and exciting because of the fact that it was illegal and it almost attracted more people to it because, you know, people want to look where they're not able to look sometimes. So, um, but I'm sure too, like that approach, you know, that mycophilic approach to mushrooms in, in your upbringing probably had uh, some ramifications in, in how you have have looked to grow Fungi Academy, which we can talk about in a bit. Um, but so so you ended up in Guatemala and you, you ended up at Fungi Academy and was it right away? You're just like, look, this is something I want to do. I want to be a big part of this. Did you kind of know right away? And like, what were your goals and dreams for Fungi Academy? Because the other thing, and maybe you don't know this is, like I knew of Fungi Academy like for a long time, like probably 2017, 2018. I don't want to say too early, but like kind of as soon as it started. But I did notice there was a point and maybe it was around 2019 when it completely changed. Like the positioning of Fungi Academy changed, the branding changed. You guys started coming up with courses. You started doing all these really cool things and being a lot more open about what you're trying to do. And that seemed to really completely changed the acceleration or the narr- or the the path that Fungi Academy was taking. So I'd like to learn a little bit more of like uh, what you did when you found Fungi Academy, what your goals were and like what you what you thought you could do with it. Mm, that's a that's actually a really good question and thanks for noticing that. Um because there was a big shift actually when I just arrived. It was like again like what we can in, in English have a really good word serendipity. I arrived I think literally 2 days after one of the other founders left. And he never came back, basically. And that was also like two weeks after the and like a founder before I left. So there was a big shift. And I noticed that when I came in because I had I started Instagram, the website, and had all these expectations. And I came and it was just the end of the high season. So they just did a bunch of courses that there was a lot of conflict in between the team with these courses. And everybody was tired and kind of sick. And there was that moment yeah, just no, like no abundance in, in the, in the community. They just had this house that they were kind of squatting and the the lab was full of mold. And I was just like, oh man, this is, this is weird. And that's also why I'm like, it's interested that like I was locked out of my money because maybe if I didn't have, have to be there, I I maybe had chosen to continue my journey because it was not the time, but because I had to be there, I was like, okay. I, I also have like a really strong intuition like a gut feeling. And I had that gut feeling like, hey, I want to be a big part of this. I love this mission. Let's make it happen. And in the beginning, like I never had done agar work three years ago. Uh, I just have fruited mushrooms from these grow kits. And I really wanted to learn that. So I wanted to go in the lab, but then like there's nobody and it was dirty. And like these people were not allowing me in the lab because it was only for, I don't know who, and for students or something. So I just started cleaning everything. And at that time, the only founder that was left in the project was Oliver and he was not even living at Funky Academy because he was trying to start this online school that uh, was at that moment going by the name of School of Soma. And I was just like, I don't know what's happening, but I love mushrooms. I think they can change the world and I just want to be part of this. And I didn't really have many aspirations. I actually thought like, okay, I'm going to stay here for a couple months. Then I'm going to continue this track this, to Ecuador and then I'll come back for high season. That was kind of my plan. And then... Yeah, not much really changed. We're still there. At one point, like Oliver was going to go to San Francisco and kind of have Fungi Academy on its back legs and like like pause that for a moment and focus on the school Soma thing. And that was his plan. And then he told me, he asked me to like take care of the physical Fungi Academy. And I was just like, okay, so I, I'll be uh, living this mass. It's quite a big house. At, and like, I can just invite all my friends and grow mushrooms and do workshops. I'm like, this is kind of cool. I'll take that on. So I went to Mexico for a visa run. And then um, Oliver, I came back and Oliver was like, plans changed. I'm not going to go to San Francisco. We're going to like move to this place that has like, that we have to rent 
which is a really beautiful spot previously known as the ashram here in this town called Sununa. And at that time, of moment, I was just a, kind of like, oh, shit, that was not what I planned to do. And I feel kind of bamboozled or something. But also, it's just like I had trust. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go for this. And then he was like, oh, I don't have any money and we have to pay $2,000 rent a month. <laughs> Can you help me out? I was like, okay, well, oh, wow. I had some savings. So I was like, okay, well, let's, let's make it happen. I'll get it back. And then, yeah, that's like when this massive shift happened of like me stepping more into a leadership role and... I have a background in marketing and, and sales and I was always very op well sp open about like this, the psychedelic mushrooms. And I know that previously Fungi Academy didn't want to be all about the psychedelic mushrooms. And I think Oliver always wanted to like have that in the forefront, but his other co-founders were not so about that. And I was completely about that. So I think that is really when it started to shift is when we decided, like when we moved to the sp spots that we're currently in the process of buying, and um and that we were more open about like psychedelic mushrooms and i think that's when a big shift happened and you can call it an energetic shift or the world was ready for this mission or something but yeah like that's yeah. when our instagram started to explode and yeah like that was that was definitely 2019 like i'd say like june july 2019 when we made that move and i stepped in as a leadership position that's when things started to go really, really fast. The shift was clear, and I think it really worked and really garnered a lot more attention. And it was pretty amazing to see. But I think what that really says was just like how interested people are in the space. Because once you shifted the way you started talking about it, it was just like absolutely exploded. And it's like, you know, obviously people are super interested in the space and super interested in, in, in learning more about it. And you're there to do that. So I guess real quick too, like for the people listening, the people watching, what maybe explain a little bit about what Fungi Academy is and, uh, you know, in its current state today, what you guys are trying to do with the platform and uh, where you're looking to take it in the future. Good question. Um, so we are a mushroom or fungal education center and we're also an intentional community. So this means that we're not only teaching people how to grow mushrooms, but they're also a bunch of microfiles living together and yeah, trying to understand, like find out the deepest depths of our consciousness and personality by living a community lifestyle it's been uh, actually quite a, a challenge to since we've been growing up like blowing up online so much and having more of a standard startup business on one end but also having this, this like physical community where people come and like have needs and there's a lot of meetings happening that's actually been a real challenge for us to figure out that balance between the leadership is like, okay, where if we spend more energy here, we have less energy for this one. And if we have more, spend more energy here, we have less energy for the other side. And um, we're actually getting to a point where we have like more and more help. And it used to be kind of like fleeting that people would come for one or two months. And right now this community is stabilizing more and more. We're finding more and more people that want to like put some roots down in, this, in, in our spot. And that actually feels really good. And, like and since January June we actually have like uh, Henry who's a really good mushroom cultivator who's been like tackling the lab because I used to try to like manage and like handle a whole lab while also like doing like creating online content and all that stuff and that was like I was really stretched thin and for the future like man there's so many things we want to do that's like where do I even begin right now our focus is definitely creating more free online content and also creating more online courses in unison with creating more physical courses. We actually have an idea of starting a 10 day mushroom immersion, which has a little bit more space for the connection, because actually what we got from the last four courses that we're doing is that like the mark, like that people leave with the skills and the, the actual like knowledge to be able to grow their own, all kinds of mushrooms in their own home. That's fantastic. But actually, well, like is the most impactful thing is the connection that they have with the rest of the students. And they feel like everybody feels like they made lifelong friends and have an experience that like focusing, like hones a little bit more on that. And then we're also thinking of doing a little bit of a shorter, less retreat style and just like three days, boom, you're going to learn all you need to learn, uh, know about like homestyle mushroom cultivation um, in three days. And we did one uh, course of cultivation course with William Padilla Brown which I would love to have more mm -hmm. guest teachers from all over the world come in or we're going to them to host courses, hopefully all over the world. Um, and the best thing about having a guest teacher is 
I can learn as well. You know, I'm mainly self-taught <laughs> and like with, in the December course, we had Paul from Fungaya. If anybody doesn't know Fungaya, that live check him out. He's a really good cultivator. And I, he went, would go on these amazing rants and I'm like, I'm, I'm the student here too, yo, I'm learning so much. And I feel like we can all learn so much about like from each other and like, especially in mushroom cultivation where there's not like one golden way and there's all these different directions that and approaches that people have. So like more content and empowering more really good mushroom cultivators to step up as teachers too. You know, there's so many amazing cultivators and until now it's been kind of like this secret or people that focuses like focus on growing mushrooms don't really focus that much on like their online personality or teaching and having an easy flow for people to step in and step in as a teacher i think is one direction that i would really like to take fungi academy yeah and i think that's super super needed i mean one of the things that i think is so cool about fungi academy and what you're doing there is like you know of course all the information on how to grow mushrooms is out there like you can learn on whatever you know youtube or different blogs or like you know the shroomery used to be the place that everybody went to learn but it was like trying to piece together all of these, you know, disparate pieces of information. It was like really difficult to learn. But I think what Fungi Academy does is like, okay, you know, here's all the things in one place and you can learn it and you can be part of a community as well, which I think is, you know, really important. Um, so yeah, I think that's like a super valuable thing that you guys are adding to the community. And I think that's amazing. And there's so much room for growth there. And uh, I think people really do appreciate that. Now, do you like, so you guys are operating in Lake Atitlan in Guatemala. Do you find that, um, it, does that present some challenges or is that more of an opportunity because it's kind of a destination for people to come down and learn how to grow mushrooms or um, like, was there any thought behind um, having it specifically in Guatemala or is that just something that kind of organically evolved? So when I came to Funky Cami, we were already in Guatemala and actually sometimes we get slack for like, why are you guys in Guatemala? I'm like, why? Well, nobody cho chose this. It was just the place when Oliver... Uh, Silvan and Tanel founded Fungi Academy. They were just together in Guatemala. And they, so it just made sense to do it in Guatemala. So it's yeah. never an intentional choice. But I think what makes it work is that there is such an epic community of people from all over the world on this lake that are doing epic pro projects. You know, like I'm looking at my neighbor who has an ecstatic dance temple while I'm looking at my other neighbor who has a permaculture school and permaculture farm that has recently also opened an Irish pub for some reason. And then I'm looking at another neighbor <laughs> that have uh, like uh, that ferment all their own foods. And we're in this nook where uh, like a lot of the local people just used to grow avocados and coffee. And now they like, that was what they were using the land for. Nobody wanted to live there. And now there's all these basically people from the West or like Western countries like Europe and North America, they're coming here. They're buying the land for, like two lifetimes of that coffee that they were actually using the land for, for example. And then they're bringing in a lot of people from all over the world that then come and spend their money that they made in the West to spend on, like in these local spots. And like, so that's like definitely what, what is happening. And that makes it like super nice because it kind of feels like we have all the cool people that live in a city, but we're living in this little town surrounded by still quite strongly prominent mind culture and, what I think is really amazing is that we can empower the local community. We have a neighbor, a local Mayan woman. She grows oyster mushrooms. And recently we, <clears throat> we've we got like together with this amazing uh, nonprofit organization called Wellkind. We've got together and we, we've like started empowering her to teach other local Mayan women. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of single moms out here. So they want to have a job that they can do at home. And we provide the spawn uh, at initially zero cost because that's a lot like it's a challenge for them to initially pay to spawn and then if they have contamination they lose all their investment but if they have the contamination we just soak that up because we just pay for grains which is almost nothing and our time which we're happily putting in but now this this lady she's her name is tamasa she's teaching other local mayan women how to grow oyster mushrooms at home while they can like watch after their kids and those are some definitely amazing upsides that we can give back to this community and challenges are definitely also that we're kind of isolated. Like I can't st send stuff to our spots. Like anytime I'm like, Oh, this is a cool idea. Like, let's see if I have some friends coming from the United States and I can send it to their house so they can bring it to us. Uh, which is kind of annoying. We can't really ship stuff online and like getting supplies, you know, anytime I see your video, Tony, and you use hardwood fuel pallets, I'm just like, damn you. <laughs> I want them. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny 
uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a challenge you wouldn't really think about. I mean, uh, but I, I mean, the upside is everything that you mentioned and, it, you know, aside from that, it's just like a gorgeous place. I've been lucky enough to go to Lake Atitlan myself. Um, it was an unbelievable experience. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So it's kind of like the perfect little gem, I think for you guys to, you know, it's a destination, right? It's a destination in more ways than one. And uh, I think people probably appreciate that. And of course, you know, the bulk of what you're doing, you're exporting like digital courses and, uh, and then this online community, you know, you can do that from anywhere in the world. So it seems like a really good fit either way. It's just interesting that it kind of all happened organically and like nobody really planned that, but sometimes that's how the best thing happened. Right. You know, for sure. And like, so well, the internet has been one of the main challenges as we have in this conversation as well, but yeah. Right now, there's somebody putting in a landline connection, which means that our connection would finally be stable. Uh, it's still in its Guatemalan oh, time. Wow. So it should have happened like two weeks ago. I'm hoping it will happen in the <laughs> next month. But it's happening. And then we can do live streams without interruption. Or if it rains, then the internet cuts out here because it's all with like satellite dishes and all kinds of weird stuff. So that's also a challenge. It's like if you're trying to do online work and everything takes like hours to load and especially with like 4k video content that we shoot on like it's it's really a challenge but we're making it through one day yeah. we're gonna have uh elon musk space internet everywhere in the world and then we're gonna be good elon musk we'll have to call him yeah uh, musk. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so um <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love to have Elon Musk on the show one day too. You know, I have heard him say actually that uh, mushrooms are delicious. He was quoted on the uh, Joe Rogan podcast saying mushrooms are delicious. So, I mean, if that isn't enough of a, a segue to get him on the show, I don't know what else is. Um, one thing I want to talk about that you specifically seem to be, I mean, this is happening throughout the mushroom community online. Uh, even Fresh Cap, we've seen it on on certain things that have no relevance and we can't understand why, but it's like this idea of censorship by kind of big tech. So you mentioned at the top of the show, I don't remember if we started recording it or not, but you just got your Instagram account back. You know, over 200,000 subscribers, super active. You guys aren't doing anything on there that you shouldn't be. You know, you're just building this great community, sharing art, sharing stories. People really appreciate it. Uh, but, you know, for whatever reason, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and team don't appreciate it and they lock you out of your account. You know, I'm sure you've had uh, videos removed and all this stuff. What is the deal with censorship in the mushroom space? And, and like, how do we navigate that? Um, and, and why do you think that's happening? I guess, like, just starting a conversation around that. I think it's happening because um, I think the, the mushroom, what people call the shroom boom, goes hand in hand with the uprise of the, 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 the sacred mushroom, the magic mushroom, the cyber mushroom, whatever you want to call this, this little beast. But I think... Like that's a real big danger to the status quo. And like, I think like what I see in myself and my friends and my loved ones is if you have an experience with the, these mushrooms, one of the first things you realize is your behaviors that don't serve you, right? Like if you uh, are an alcoholic, that's why like a lot of studies are showing if you're addicted to smoking cigarettes, you're seeing that like, hey, this is not good for me. Why am I doing this like comprehensively? And unfortunately, uh, most of our generation also has that addiction to to our phones, and ah, like that they must know about that. They're like, if I can see that connection, they can see that connection, and like they won't don't want that. They want everybody to be hooked on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, so they can make more advertisement money. That's like the kind of underlining thing of like why I think it's happening. And like we got it back because William Video Brown, uh, who's an epic mushroom cultivator, he basically. Uh, figured out as the first person in the Western world how to grow cordyceps mushrooms and like he got taken down and then somebody that works at Meta reached out to him and filed an internal complaint and he got his account back immediately and like that like I got the contact from that person and they were kindly kind enough to also uh, file an internal complaint and then we got a letter like oh we're very sorry this is a mistake because I think if when whenever you get a chance to talk to a person, they're gonna see like, hey, they didn't break any of the community guidelines. But the algorithms are still set to anything with mushrooms can be psychedelic and that can cost us like that can be illegal. So there, that's just what they're going for because you know I don't know how these algorithms work, but it's a very clear showcase that it is an algorithm because our video on YouTube that was about growing and eating chestnut mushrooms, Felosia adiposa, got taken down. 
because it was like sharing illegal, like consuming drugs or something. I'm like, no, it, it's not about that. So we filed a complaint. It's back up. But like, I think it's, that's, it's a showcase that it's just like an, an algorithm sees a mushroom, sees a person eating a mushroom. That's illegal. And it gets taken down. And unfortunately, that's taking the toll on a lot of a lot of people. And you know what's the, the, the real funny thing? There's so many people impersonating me on the internet. I bet there's a bunch of people impersonating you on the internet. I know there's a bunch of people impersonating yeah. my friend Mike Tyson that are actively trying to scam people with not only mushrooms, but also like amphetamines and other illegal substances. And like th those accounts sometimes stay up until like four or 5,000 followers. And I filed a complaint yeah. the other day of somebody using our logo to do this. And like I got a, back, a reply back from Instagram. It's like, yeah, they don't do anything wrong. I'm like, well, they're using our logo, dude. That's like, that's a trademark. Like I can file, like I can sue them because we have a, a like a trademark on this, but that's, right. that's a whole nother ball game. And then I spend like hours working with lawyers and trying to find this person and sue them. But like, I just like, I don't understand that those accounts can be up and they're looking at people that are actively just sharing their mushroom growing. I know your reishi mushroom video got taken down. Like that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean. And we even appealed that one and uh, it got rejected after two reviews. And I was just like, I was, you know, I was so confused. And I think it's still up, but you have to prove you're over 18 or something to watch it, to learn how to grow reishi mushrooms. So like, whatever, that's as far as we can get, you know, and, you know, we can't link to mushroom substrate articles, even though it's just showing how to grow oyster mushrooms. Um, and there was a time, like, I think it was like two years ago where there was kind of like a big sweep of the YouTube mushroom community and like all sorts of just the band hammer came down for whatever reason. And like part of me can kind of understand like why like YouTube would moderate certain content because like, yeah, there's clear community guidelines and there's clear content that goes against it. Right. And maybe it's really difficult to do that at scale, but it, it, it's really, it sucks for people like you and me that are just trying to provide good content for people and have to, you know, the other end of things fight, f fight with uh, the big tech algorithms that are trying to, trying to take it down. And what you mentioned with the impersonations and the scammers, like that seems to be rife in the mushroom space. I'm sure it's like the same in cryptocurrency and some other things, but like for whatever reason in mushrooms, like, yeah, we've definitely had that happen. There's always comments on our videos of, of scammers and um, that part's really annoying. And yet, you know, those things stay up. Uh, so maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just harder to manage from, from their end of things. It's hard to say. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a challenge, you know? And like, I understand that from their perspective, like they want child-friendly advertising. And if that stuff happens on our platform, they cannot advertise for children, which I think should be illegal to begin with. <laughs> but like, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I think there's going to be a big change. Like, I know it's like people like, like, or, um, social media is like minds have been trying to get off, but. I think at one point, like more and more people are, people are getting sick of Facebook, but everybody is like at a stage, like you can't really let go of like these platforms. And, you know, I just like, I'm sad that like how far I've seen YouTube drop in many ways, you know, it used to be a, a platform for people by people. And now most of the videos I get recommended are, are like really big channels with a lot of funding behind them. And that's, like, where's the, the chance to explore the 500 subscriber, really cool, like knowledgeable person. And, and, and that's a challenge. And I hope like, you gotta dig deep, will, I guess, yeah, yeah. but like some, I hope something else will arise. That's like, takes the social media back to the roots because in the end it's like mushrooms, you know, mushrooms want to connect to like, to trees or to other mycelium of the same species. And like we as humans also want to connect. And I think in this global age it's great to be able to connect but it's the contradiction in terms that like these social medias are actually making us disconnect instead of connect and like yeah is, is there going to be something that's going to show like step up and actually help us connect i think time will tell yeah i think it's uh you know a lot more kind of in-person things and local things kind of what you guys are doing because you're right i mean social media does get absolutely exhausting um, not just for the users of it, but also people that are producing a lot of content. Like, um, it's a drain. And I think I really do think it changes your brain a little bit, right? Like, it, it almost like trains you to realize most things are unimportant, like the death scroll, the endless death scroll. And people are just like endlessly scrolling and their brain is just throwing out things because they realize it's not important. And then when you try to actually learn something important, it becomes a lot more difficult. I mean, obviously, this is a much wider conversation, but um, yeah, I just find that fascinating that specifically in mushrooms, for some reason, there's so much 
like censorship. But I'm really glad to hear that you got your Instagram account back. That is awesome. So now it's just Fungi Academy, right? You had Fungi.academy, but now it's just Fungi Academy, one word on Instagram. Yeah. And like also okay. follow the backup just in case. <laughs> you you got to have the backup. You got to have the backup. Well, the other thing you're doing too is building an email list, right? So um, that's obviously something that uh, is a lot more difficult to take down. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your email list and what you guys are building there? Because I get your emails every Monday and they're always a pleasure. I can listen to whatever tune you recommend and scroll through and learn all about mushrooms. So tell us a little bit about the mushroom mailer that you guys put out. Uh, thanks, man. Like, yeah, we um, we realized that like it's the we want to be in control, right? Like, and maybe to go back a little bit also and like how we decided to offer our courses uh, is like at first we looked at a lot of the the main platform like Teachable or Thinkific or Kajabi because it's kind of easy. It looks really beautiful fairly easy but then like you're hosting your stuff on their platform so if they decide they don't want you on their platform they take it down right and um after our instagram got taken down the first time i was also like okay we are, like we have to really focus on this this growing of the email list i think it actually happened the first time we got shadow banned and our engagement went down and we had like a couple of like these cvs's i think they're called which are excel files of all people's emails and we, we reinstigated the email list and like, okay, we have to give these people something, right? Like if you just sign up and you just get an email once in a while, I'm a, a personally a really big fan of like, uh, like weekly newsletters or monthly newsletters that actually have good content instead of just being spam and like that actually have something to learn and like with more in depth. So I, I thought of like Mushroom Magic on Monday because uh, I really like words that start off with the same letter and made complete sense. And we've been doing that for a year and a half now, I think. And so every Monday, like I, uh, me and Karina write a, uh, like I, I do an intro with what's got, like what's happening with Fungi Academy, uh, either in the physical or the digital or what's going into my life. And I just kind of blurt it out. Uh, and then like, there's a tune that you get to listen to while, uh, like my one rule is no words. So you, you don't get words because I don't like reading. When there's lyrics in the in the background, but then also we we share a, a mushroom of the week, which we call the mega mushroom. Um, and it, in the beginning, is all the basic ones like the porcinia, bolitas, idillas, and now we're at the stage we've been doing it for a year and a half. Like so, it's almost uh, almost 100 mushrooms, like 80 mushrooms. So now we got the orange peel fungus and all these kind of obscure mushrooms that people get to learn about. <laughs> and uh, another thing I like to do is like share some news or like a cool scientific article that I just read about and just like share my mind. And then Karina features a person of the week, the Michael file of the week, because I think it's really important that like, Hey, we got to show all these other cool people doing cool projects. And you have been one several times. And, um, Next up is Mike Tyson. This week, I just went live with Stephen Brooks from Punta Moma and like Ecoversity. And sometimes they're really big names. And sometimes there's people like like most people have never heard of. And I, I really like that. It's kind of the same what you're doing here, although your background is a lot more fancy. And the Instagram Live is a really easy <laughs> tool um, to just like hop on a conversation with somebody and share that with the world. And yeah, it's been a, a really nice pillar in uh, what we do. And like people really like it. And then sometimes like we have a student and they read the uh, like newsletter every week. I mean, you told me you'll read the newsletter. I'm like, Oh yeah, I, I know the numbers and they say people read the newsletter, but like, I forget there's actually people behind them. And that's also why I really appreciate the, the in-person situations or even like these one-on-one -on -one video conversations that I think are, are really inspiring and like want me to, to push this through and, it's like, it's funny how it became a practice, right? Like now every Monday, that's just always like in the morning, I prep it a little bit on Sunday and on a Monday, I just do that thing. And it's the same with, if you have a morning yoga practice, you just do it and structure around creation. I found is really, really good. If every Tuesday you're going to just write 2000 words and it doesn't matter what comes out. Like at one point, you're just going to be super creative every Tuesday morning because your brain is wired like that instead of waking up and scrolling Instagram every morning because then your brain is wired like that, you know, and I, I'm guilty of this. I'm not perfect. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more, fungiacademy.com slash yep. newsletter, sign up. You're going to get the emails. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. I highly recommend uh, people do that because uh, it's actually good. Like it's a, it's a good newsletter that you're happy to see in your inbox every Monday and read through. And uh, the thing that I love about mushrooms too, and I'm sure you can agree with this, is there's never a shortage of things to talk about. You mentioned like, okay, well, we've done a hundred mushroom species. It's like, oh no, like we only have about 9,999 left to talk about. <laughs> you know, like there's so much to possibly talk about. Um, 
and then you know mushroom news and all the cool stuff that's happening and of course updates on fungi academy and everything that's happening there so yes if you haven't signed up uh it's, what is it fungiacademy.com slash newsletter is that where people can go sign up perfect cool and we'll put the link in the description too uh if you're if you're watching this um so kind of wrapping up here with a few a few questions uh a few kind of rapid fire questions so first of all what excites you most about the world of mushrooms right now what excites me most is that we don't know jack shit. can i curse uh <laughs> like there's so many discoveries the other like it's a couple months ago now but like somebody discovered cordycepin which we thought was only like found in like species of ophiocordyceps or cordyceps somebody found that in Salasbi cubensis i'm like that, like if that's how little we know what yeah somebody found that in uh Salasbi cubensis found some cordycepin Wow. Exactly. So that like, is wild. It's wild, you know? So like, just like the amount of mass spectrometry, spectrometry that we need to do on all kinds of mushrooms to find all of these cool compounds. Like, um, I, I teach uh, that we don't know anything because like right now, I think we have like, what is it? Like 30, 40,000 fungal species in the scientific records. And they're estimating between one and a half to four billion species. So like, Anybody can figure something out. Like I, one of my true inspirations is Alan Rockefeller. He famously always said, "Like I, I never went to school for this. I started doing it." And then right now he's like, like classified ten, fifteen, maybe even more species in the scientific record just by going out foraging mushrooms, doing DNA analysis himself, and never went to school for it. And I think what other field of science you can just come in as an amateur and just change the whole fields. I think. That's really cool about mushrooms and we have so much to learn. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Basically, anybody at any point can make contributions to the world of mycology and mushroom science because like you said, I like the way you put it, we still know jack shit. We feel like we know a lot. We talk about, about mushrooms a lot. A lot of people are studying it, but like it just, you know, it's an entire kingdom. Uh, there's so much to learn. So that's a really good point. Um, on that point, if you had to name one mushroom, other than the sacred mushrooms, one mushroom that you're most interested in to learn more, what would that mushroom be? Do you have a favorite mushroom? Yeah, recently I've been diving deep in cordyceps cultivation. So we've successfully cultivated the first cordyceps mushrooms on Lake Atitlan. And ah, man, I love it. It's like, it's like what everybody around says, is they're alien space Cheetos. And we, we got a, a mini PCR to do actually like mating type analysis. So that's like diving, like getting me out of my comfort of like, like analysis and the things I'm like comfortable with. And like, it's just such an inspiration. I personally am uh, like, that's one of my staples for sure. And growing them has been an absolute pleasure. And we actually made a specific growing room just for the cordyceps. So right now, definitely cordyceps militaris. Love them. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it is cordyceps in general is such a fascinating species and cordyceps militaris is really cool. And uh, so are you gonna, guys going to be making that part of your course as well? I know you did like a workshop with uh, William Padilla Brown teaching people how to grow cordyceps. Is that going to become kind of like a core part of Fungi Academy and what you guys do there? So like we, um, I don't know how much I can disclose this because it's just like we want to work with William. I, I, there's have been some changes in the entry of Guatemala that might make it difficult. Um, but like, yeah, I want to like, I want to teach about all the mushrooms. It's like right now, we put ourselves in the market with Slavsky Cabanzas and the Sacred Mushrooms, but actually the first couple of courses we're going to do have nothing to do with psychedelics. We're going to teach lion's mane cultivation, cordyceps cultivation, reishi. I'm uh, working on a fungal ecology course that talks about all of the different roles of fungi in the ecosystem. There's actually a waiting list some, uh, on the website. If you go to fungicamy.com slash sacreds dot dash mycology dash school, there's a waiting list. But like, that's what I'm excited about right now is just like offering all of the fungal knowledge and kind of accepting, hey, we love the sacred mushroom, but we also love all of these other mushrooms. And that's what the word that we want to get out. And, you know, there's so much about fungi that have nothing to do with psychedelics that inspire me. And that's also what I want to bring to the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's another way to think about it too, because I think a lot of people like try to delineate psychedelic mushrooms with functional mushrooms, or other mushrooms and have like a clear line of delineation between the two. But when you think about it from the mushrooms perspective or it's all the same thing, you know, it's a, uh, it's just a, an endless gradient. And I think all mushrooms have a lot to offer, obviously, uh, which is what we do at Fresh Cap. You know, obviously my passion is in the functional mushrooms as well and medicinal mushrooms. Um, 
but you know, it's, it's all part of the same family. It's mushrooms. And I think there's just so much to learn and so much to share and so many connections to make. So that's really cool. Um, tell us where, you know, other than, so fungiacademy.net, you mentioned you have your Instagram, where else can people find more and learn more about you or learn more about the school? Yeah. It's uh, fungiacademy.com actually. Um, so that's, that's where you can find most of our things. I think we're on all the social media platforms, Fungi Academy. Uh, my personal Instagram is at Jasperius, if you can find that. Um, but yeah, like we, we're trying to, to get our reach. Oh, YouTube is definitely one we're working on right now. We're at, not, at this moment releasing a video every week. We are like, it's difficult, but it's so much work. When you told me you did most of that stuff all by yourself, I was so impressed, dude. That was really, really crazy. Like, I'm not a video. No, not anymore. I have to admit now I have I have some serious help now. So, uh, yeah, in the early days of doing everything, I couldn't keep up. Oh, man, that's amazing. But, like, I don't know how to edit. I just know how to write and talk in front of a camera. I don't know how to film. So I, we have a theme and, like, yeah, it's, luckily it's growing. We have uh, actually we're working with teaching some local people here to also learn about video editing. And uh, we're hoping to... Yeah, get more on the YouTube. So, if, like YouTube, Funky Cami, just look for us. I think you find us. It's been growing slowly and steadily. We have some videos that are doing pretty well, which I'm stoked for. It's really funny. We talked about censorship. The one video that is just exploding is literally how much of the magic mushroom you have to take and what effect you get. That's the biggest one. So, so far, <laughs> YouTube has not taken it down. <laughs> but, uh, it can never yeah. make sense of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um we're like definitely find us on youtube that's one that we're wanting to grow because i'm a massive youtube con uh, consumer i watch your videos all the time uh, i love catching up with what willie maiko has to share and uh, kurz kazak is our inspiration we want to get into more we have we're working with amazing animators and we want to like really embrace that video game style that we're already trying to do and like have more of that so yeah stay tuned we're we're, we're gonna create some epic stuff Awesome. Well, I'm super stoked for you guys. I would honestly love to come down there one day and do a collaboration and just do some videos as well. I think that'd be super cool. Teach a class. So totally, definitely have to totally figure out. Have ever taught a physical class because you have so much knowledge. Come. We'll make it happen. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. I'd love to. VIP treatment. You get to stay in my house. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing so yeah we'll definitely have to put that together but um yeah so okay youtube uh, instagram and make sure again you sign up for the, the magic mushroom on a monday mailing list um jasper well, mushroom magic not magic mushroom so did i say magic mushroom on yeah, monday okay sorry know, mushroom magic why, on a monday that's why it gets people. um <laughs> i just sent an email yesterday this, this the subject was uh mushrooms make magic molecules i just yeah i love the the end thing as well and again it was about it wasn't about uh, psilocybin it was about beta glucans triterpene and cordycepin which i learned something new about today amazingly uh, i'm gonna have to go look that up afterwards but anyways uh, i just want to say yeah thank you so much for coming on the show uh you guys have such a great story to tell you guys are doing so many cool things down there it's doing such awesome stuff for the mycological community appreciate everything we're doing and yeah thanks so much for coming on and chatting mushrooms today thanks so much for having me on man i we are like we love what you guys are about. You make epic products, you make epic content and videos. Every time you chat, I'm like, this is a, like, it feels like we can go on forever. So next time, and whenever you want to have me on, Tony, just like call me. We'll make it happen. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. Thanks again, Jasper. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Ciao. You too.